It's not Leviosa, it's Leviosa. Experimenti, experimenti. Hi, my name is Jamie. I'm part of the sourcing team here at Nordic Approach. And today we're just doing a, a small introductory to the Fermenti Experimenti video series uh, to explain a little bit about uh, the processing and what is fermentation. So, welcome. So right now, when everyone is scared about bacteria taking over our lives, it might be a good time to remember that bacteria is actually also about all the good stuff in life. It creates our cheese, our beer, our wine, our uh, chocolate, pretty much everything that we really love is made by fermentation and also coffee. Without all the bacteria, there would be no cup of delicious coffee in your morning routine. So. So let's get this out. Let's just leave it fermenting in that corner over there. So what do we talk about when we talk about processing? In the very beginning of coffee production, you can divide it in four basic steps. So one is the growing of the coffee from the plant until the farmers pick the coffee and deliver it to the washing station. Then you have the processing, that's when it basically arrives at the washing station until it's uh, washed or it's, it's finished as, an, as a honey or whatever and is being put into the fermentation tank. And then the last uh, part on the drying station is the drying part. We hope to bring the coffee in the most stable way from down 40 to 60 percent moisture down to 12 or 9 percent and the last step will be storage and then what is fermentation when we talk about fermentation from food and beverages we talk about uh, microorganisms breaking down bigger molecules into smaller molecules those microorganisms can be yeasts uh, fungi or bacteria and all of them have a different purpose. More specifically, the, um, the enzymes is what causes the fermentation. It will break down those bigger molecules into smaller molecules, and in the process of doing so, it will create flavors that are otherwise not found in the original product. So the art of fermentation is in creating an environment that is beneficial to the good bacteria, to the good yeast, to the good molds, so they can proliferate and creating an environment that is bad for all the uh, bacteria that would otherwise create off flavors that you would maybe not want in certain kind of coffees. Now, the more we experiment, maybe we get a diff we develop a different taste for different kind of flavors and we will see oh, maybe we can create a certain kind of environment that does create acidic yeasts or others that we normally would think that maybe it's negative, but now we come to appreciate them. So the more we learn, the more we create different environments, the more different flavor profiles we can create. That's a continuous journey that we are on now and that we will see a lot of benefits from the next years to come. Originally, most probably, fermentation was simply done to simplify production, to most probably just get uh, faster results, more yield in a shorter time window. And over time, they saw that all the little extra steps they were doing was actually influencing the flavor a lot. And so they started documenting and, or maybe not even documenting, but more naturally over this, the span of years and years, they found, oh wait, if we do this little step here and there, we create a different brighter profile, we get more money for it. And then slowly, different cultures across the world started developing their own very specialized way of processing. So whether it's a washed coffee, a natural or a honey, like a lot of countries are doing those specific processes, even though we know them as one different category, washed, they will know those processes in a little bit different way. They will create a different way. Kenya will do it in a different way than Ethiopia, for example. Um, this was done over hundreds of years, probably in a more natural way where they just felt it out or and over time they started documenting it and with the anaerobics now in combination with all the sophisticated machines that we have we see that with documentation we can make steps and we can create a process much more rapidly which you've seen over the last 
couple of years. All those small steps together resulting in more complex and more specialized processes, eventually creating the multiple versions of fully washed, washed honeys, natural coffees, as evolution does. Thank you for watching this first episode of this series. I hope you enjoyed it a little bit. And um, next up, we'll be talking about the actual processes, washed, honey, natural. So I wish you a very beautiful day and don't forget to smile. Don't forget to subscribe and to order a sample. I'm not doing that. <laughs>